Well, they're the biggest rivals on the track. They're the best of friends off the track. And Tony Mackay, former multiple champion jockey, joins me now on the news. And for reaction about uh, your great friend and former rival retiring here at Punches, Honey P. Ah, sure, look, it's, it's a sad day for racing, uh, Kevin. You know, to have such a, a superstar like that um, not going to be seen any longer on a horse, is, is, it's a big loss for racing. Um, you know, I've known him a, a long time. I think the first time I really got to know him, I think James Nash, um, called me, oh God, must, I don't know how long ago, it was probably around 2000, whenever he started riding a little bit in England um, himself and he said to me, himself and Jennifer were coming over and there's any chance they could have a bed and I, I, whatever it was, it was away, I said to them, oh, there's a key outside the house, let yourself in, I met him the next morning or whatever and we kind of, there's been a Ruby's room in our house ever since, Kevin, to be honest, we only built the house about six years ago and he hasn't really stayed in it but the builders have christened the room Ruby's room so everyone that stays there, so he's, look, we've been friends a long time Look, he was the best jockey that I ever saw riding or I ever rode against. You know, that you know, he's just like he's like Lionel Messi playing football. You can't teach kids how to be like that, you know, he's just different. And you'd some fantastic battles on the pitch, out in a race course in some of the top races. He produced some brilliant finishes that will live between the pair of you for years and years to come. What was Ruby's strengths as a jockey? Um, yeah, he beat me in most of those close finishes, to be honest, from what I can remember. He said he was stronger. Um, well, well um, I look, at it, what was his strengths? You know, I said a little bit like Noah Feely, like he, he had no weakness, you know what I mean? But he genuinely had no weakness. He had everything in terms of the style and the strength and the temperament and the judge of pace. And, you know, he had everything that you'd want in a, in a top class sports person. And, and that little bit extra, he was different, you know. It's, you know, you can teach a kid. And I don't think what people will ever get Kevin, how mentally and physically strong he was, you know, how mentally strong he was. To come back from the falls time and time again, you, know, you have to be a seriously hard person to, to do what he done, you know, so, uh, but he went out, he got to go out in his own terms and, you know, that's, not everyone's lucky enough to do that, you know, so, you know, to come win the Gold Cup here in points. And the, the tough thing about it is he rode Kenboy and was better on him than he's ever given a horse a ride in his life, you know what I mean? So it's a hard thing to walk away from. You know, because you just don't lose that. And obviously Ruby's put a lot of thought into this and it must be hard, like you as well, the time has come that it's time to, to you know, you're getting a little bit older and it's time to look to something new. But it must be very, very hard to come down off that buzz of riding at the top level. Yeah, it's very hard because, you know, look, it's hard. Once you get into your 40s as a jump jockey, it's hard. You know, you got that's the reality of it. Um, the biggest thing for any sports person that's lucky enough to perform on a big stage, and a lot of, not many will say it, but the egotistical thing of, of coming here to Pontchastown and thinking everyone's here to see you perform, you know what I mean? And that's, that's what makes the good ones as good as they are, you know, they think that it's, you know, they want to come out on the big stage and perform for everyone to see, and um, he's going to miss that, you know, and in some ways, you know, in some ways, in some ways that, that element of danger and that element of risk and that adrenaline rush that you get going out in a, in a race is very difficult to replace. Obviously, the winning is everything, but there is an element of excitement in the danger too. And for Ruby, obviously, Cheltenham, very close to his heart. So many victories there. Champion jump jockey there more times at the festival than we care to remember. But for him to go out here at his local track, he grew up five minutes away from it. After riding two grade ones, that must mean a lot to him. Yeah, see, that's obviously the way he planned it. You know, when you think that he won the Irish Grand National last week, you think, what an opportunity if he was going to call it quits after a big day. But he obviously had his mindset in it. And obviously the Gold Cup is the biggest race of the week here. So to be able to, you know, you know, to be able to go out and, you know, have, really have three in the race and be on the right one and, and be able to walk away after winning and giving the horse a, as brilliant a ride as he did, you know, it's probably the perfect ending for him. And is there anyone that stands out? I know I'm putting you on the spot now. Is there anyone, a real ride that stood out all through his long, illustrious career that you said that was special? Uh, honestly, I wouldn't have a clue where to start. You know, I've seen him winning on so many horses that he shouldn't have. And you, you know, you often watched him in races and he'd be so far back thinking like, you know, can he get to where he's got to and, and still win? And, and that's what he, you know, he was such a brilliant judge of pace in a race, you know, never, you know, you know, it was always very brave in how he rode a horse. You know, he was always, was always happy to ride it when it's when comfort zone. And, um, look, he just had it all.